Welcome to His Home Academy, podcast number three. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. Education for Knowledge, Understanding, and Wisdom. There are a number of podcasts which address this topic, but really we're going to be getting to the meat, the substance of the matter. And it's more imperative, well, than we've thought. It's always been such a priority for for parents over their, their progeny. Adults to children, from the older to the younger generation, of any nation, of any folk, of any people, of any society, that they acquire knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Because as you inculcate such unto the younger blood what must the elder do but continue to learn continue to grow continue to become knowledgeable understanding and wise particularly in the word of the lord his will the things of which make everything worthwhile and all of it can be summarized in the Holy Bible. Holy being that which is set apart to the Lord, Bible, Biblios, compilation of a number of books, in this case, all set apart for the Lord, unto the Lord, that we may have knowledge, understanding, and wisdom in his holiness. Bear in mind that there is a resurging character education amongst both secular and quote unquote religious and Christian circles, and it overlaps quite a bit. Composed of that of, well, a gross, abominable amalgamation of the gospel and modern psychological paradigms. The primary one being that of positive psychology, which neither recognizes the righteousness of the Lord nor the sin of man, and thus there is no need for grace or salvation. And yet so much of the church, or those who claim to be of the fellowship of the body of Christ, have united well, false Jesus, which what is antichrist from his very nature. So thus we have a false tongued Jesus. That we glean knowledge, understanding, and wisdom from. Very much similar to the Jesus of ecumenism, particularly in Dare I Say It I Will, the Jesus of publications such as The Chosen which is the combined efforts of Protestant Evangelicals, Roman Catholicism, Mormonism, and even to a degree, Eastern mysticism, and even Judaism. You may say messianic, but I differ. Because why would Jews care, secular or religious, we would depict a not so biblically accurate Jesus. Especially one that is based on, on average, 90% of the storyline, the script, being completely, completely and utterly, well, what do we, what do we call it? Artistic license loosely based on the scripture. So let us go into the scriptures themselves. Let's go into the word as revealed. The Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And we will see that between the laws of the prophets given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for he was from the beginning, he is the word, and that of his earthly ministry, he provides with to us 
that which is, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And this, my dear listeners, my brethren, particularly those with children, or you'll be having children in due time, or you'll be teaching them in due time, whatever the case may be, this is what you impart unto them. And there is no alternative. In fact, the first two passages we, we, we go to show you that what we call earthly success, well, God has no favor towards. He's impartial to it. Don't take my word for it. Open up your Bibles to Job chapter 21, verses 7 through 27, where Job says, Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the, the rod of God upon them. Their bull gendereth and faileth not, their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. So the wicked, depicted as, well, well, those who are, you may say, not directly for the Lord, but was, but if you're not for the Lord, who are you for? But the self and anything else, that's idolatry, that's rebellion. It's Antichrist. But here you have those who are well off, those who are quote quote doing well, who are successful. And oftentimes we comfort ourselves with that well being the silver lining. But indeed, all that is a precious metal does not truly glitter. But here you see that their success, they have families, their home stand. And their livelihoods are profitable, are prosperous. And they're having a good time, enjoying the, the leisures and pleasures of life. But what does it say at the end of verse 13? And in a moment, go down to the grave, where eventually life ends. Verse 14, therefore they say unto God, depart from us. For we desire not the knowledge. What the knowledge of knowledge for knowledge sakes? Knowledge for power? Knowledge that will grant them true success? Quote, quote, true success? No. Knowledge of thy ways, the Lord's ways. Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. And what is their, what is their reasoning? What is their rationale? What is... Their argumentation, what is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. They seek not the knowledge of his ways, the Almighty's ways. Or as far as they're concerned, they got everything that they need. Even though, verse 13, in a moment go down to the grave. Verse 17, How oft is the candle of the wicked put out, and how oft cometh their destruction upon them? God distributeth sorrows in his anger. I want you to let that sit with you. They are as stubble before the wind, and as chaff that the storm carrieth away. God layeth up his iniquity for his children. He rewardeth him, and he shall know it. His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what pleasure, what pleasure hath he in his house after him, when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? And that's the thing. I've come across so many people, those in the church and those without, or at least so they claim to be within. And they talk so much of what? Here, 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 here. 
The great temptation among so many brethren is here, 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 here. For after all, in the last days, in the coming of Christ, he shall establish kingdom of heaven on earth. And yet, strangely enough, they'll also say, say, well, we don't know when he shall come. For the meantime, we need to build his kingdom of heaven on earth. What's the temptation? That we think that we're doing well. That we believe that the Lord is blessing us when we are prosperous on this earth. And yet, surprise, surprise, when we have our one foot in the narrow way, one foot in the broad, one foot in heavenly things and the other foot chasing, steering towards mammon, worldly wealth, material blessing, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. That which rusts, and that which is consumed by pests, by moths. We're surprised when our children deviate from the ways of the Lord, if not do more horrendous and abominable things before our eyes, and say what? To the Lord, depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. For good and evil cannot be inter intertwined, and I tell you, my dear brethren, I'm not claiming that if you you devoutly and without any reservation faithfully instill the ways of the Lord into your children that is a full-on bulletproof indomitable guarantee that they will pursue him and serve him as a more righteous and, and holy generation. For after all, it is still of their choice, is still of his will, when it's all said and done. We are not the sower. We are merely, merely dropping the seeds, dropping his word. And whether or not it gets into their heart and bears fruit for life, for, you know, for all their life, from there on, they continue in his ways. That's not of our choosing. It's not of our will. For we contend with our own hearts. The darkness of our own lives, we deal with the old ways that still linger as we die daily unto ourselves to become more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I guarantee to you, until, like his word, as his word instructs, as you will see soon, all the more, that if you mix mammon with his will, don't be surprised. And if your children come out faithful, it is definitely by grace. It's by grace alone, for sure. Don't expect anything glorious if you think you can have your cake and eat it too. For after all, it says, con continuing in verse 22, Shall any teach God knowledge, seeing he judges those that are high? One dieth in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. His breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. And another dieth in the bitterness of his soul, and never eateth with pleasure. They shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me. They shall lie down like a like in the dust, and the worm shall cover them. It doesn't matter what you accumulate on the side of heaven. And if you don't believe Jesus is coming back anytime soon, which is fine, because he'll come back whenever he so, he so pleases, so be ready for him regardless. But if you're too busy a.k.a. seeking the kingdom, meaning truly, you're truly in your heart of hearts and your vain imaginations, building up worldly wealth, building up something to carnally pass down to your children, or, in all honesty, keep for yourself. Your life will end. And, be, and don't think he's a fool for verse 27. Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine 
against me. Over the words of Christ, Luke chapter 11, verses 45. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, thou reproachest us also? And the lawyers, also known as the scribes, they copy, they read, they study, they know the scriptures. They know the Old Testament inside and out. They also provide to a degree, hence their name, legal services, which vary because considering, remember, unlike today, unlike most cultures, as of current, the theology of the Jews was a centrifugal force within their society, limited by that of the Romans. So these were men who were particularly conservative, traditional. If anything, these were men who can arguably be, well, aside from their legalistic dealings, but in the original sense, not in the watered-down sense, were more trustworthy than the Pharisees. Or should be. Verse 46, And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers, for ye laid men with burdens grievous to be borne, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. So the men who, the faithful men who knew the word, declared it to the people, who cared not for worldly prosperity. They cared not to be high members, to be prosperous members. For all they cared about what was the knowledge of the Lord and for everybody to be reminded of it, especially amidst their error, amidst their rebellion, their sin. Truly bear ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. He's not heaping all the sins committed by previous men unto them, but in other words, you will receive the same punishment as those who slew these men, because it is of the same spirit, it is of the same heart. Heart that, think of, think of Cain, who was jealous of his brother and slew him because the Lord would not accept his sacrifice. So rather than do what was right, he conspired against the faithful. Woe unto you, ye lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Meaning what? Ye enter not in yourselves. So they should know better, but they refuse to truly know. They know in mind, but not in heart. They are uncircumcised of heart. The knowledge of the Lord's ways is not in them. And them that were entering in, ye hindered. They can't stop them, but they were obstacles. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. So they knew they were guilty. They knew he spoke no, no lies, no deceit. So all they can do is what? Hope that he would falter and be deceptive, be corrupt as they were. So thus, my, my dear brethren, speak the truth, know the truth. Let every man be a liar. 
and God be praised. Receive glory. Proverbs chapter 9, verses 4 through 10, regards to understanding. Whoso is simple, this is wisdom calling out, whoso is simple, let him turn in hither as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. What is meant by understanding? To make distinctions, to discern, to be able to tell apart one thing from another. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So the knowledge of what is what? The ways of the Lord, separate from what? That of which is not of him, against him, contrary to him. To know the difference between the two, and to, and knowing means what? It's a personal thing, as in to choose and follow that way. That is understanding. That is understanding. Verse 6, forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. For the way of the sinful man, the rebellious man, man of iniquity, is death. So understanding is distinguishing his ways and walking in them. Once again, evidence, let's go to Mark chapter 7. Verses 14 through 23. And it says, And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Understand what? There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And your children have ears, make sure they hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, and he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Understanding of what? He's speaking of material things, of earthly things? No. Do ye, do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entering into a man, it cannot defile him? Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. So, def so this defilement he speaks of is that completely of the person. Isn't it is not exactly a good idea to consume and ingest, to consume and ingest, take in things of which are harmful to the body. But, the thing is that, why do people do that? It's because of the condition of their heart. The heart must be addressed. And thus the rest will follow. Verse 20, and he said, That which cometh out of a man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. In conclusion, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. 
So once again, understanding. Do you understand these things? A.K. Do you not recognize the sin, the evil, the rebellion within? My dear listeners, we have a interesting problem on our hands. We spend more time criticizing, and I'm tempted to do it too. I've done it before, and I and I repent, and I pray that I do, that I reconsider. I can look at the evils of men. All I want, all we want. But until our houses are set in order, until the hearts of our families are circumcised, we have no business desiring economic stability, political freedom, educational excellence from our society. Indeed, if our houses are defiled from within by our own members, if we are of, well, a generation that, in all honesty, when times are good, forgets the Lord, or very much so uh, makes him secondary. For we find that our theology, our spirituality hinges upon all such I've spoken of, our political freedoms, our economics, stability, the educational pedagogy being quote-unquote holy at a part, and yet we care more for the things of which are tantalizing to our eyes, to our taste buds, not our, the very touch of our flesh. Things that tickle our ears, but not necessarily edify, transform the mind, and make and prepare our hearts to receive sovereignty, the love and majesty that is our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. And our first thoughts are not, Father, thy will be done, but what is my purpose in life? And sure, we code it with the Lord's, the purpose the Lord gave me, but really, it's what is my purpose in life. And we have no business demanding of such things. For what comes from without will not defile us, but what is from within. And thus, may our temples be swept, purged, so the Spirit may reign within us. And the good work of the Lord pour out. May we be a fountain of his goodness, of his tender mercies. First and foremost, do we understand such things? Lastly, wisdom. Turn our attention over to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. One of my favorite books. Fortunately, a lot of people, they only read it half-heartedly and thus they have a form of Christian nihilism which is very tempting when you're younger. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 11 through 14 Wisdom is good with an inheritance and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. What kind of profit are we talking about? What kind of inheritance are we talking about? What's good of the world? No. Heavenly eternal things for everything here will pass away. And we may or may not be the generation that gets to endure and survive and witness the new heaven and new earth. Be the last one that doesn't die. But likely, we, we will share the same temporal end as so many before us. So don't expect much any time in your life. I sure don't. I guess I would say I'm I'm too nihilistic in that regards. <laughs> Anywho, 
For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is. Remember, knowledge for knowledge sakes, knowledge about science, the arts, morality, philosophy, theology, no. Knowledge. That is, knowledge is, that wisdom giveth life to them that haveth. That wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Have what? Knowledge. Knowledge what? The things of the Lord. 13. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider this. Consider. God also has set the one over against the other. To the end that man should find nothing after him. And read the book of Ecclesiastes. It's made very poignant. Can you expect what you accumulate here on earth? That which, that's what rust will destroy. That's what moths will consume. To be passed on to your progeny. Is there any guarantee of which they will be fearful and loving of the Heavenly Father and use it for his glory? Or will they be a late blooming prodigal son? Absent of your presence. Consider the work of the God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? The longevity of things is not for us to decide that the nature of things is not our will, but his be done. Question is, what about your heart? Well, the hearts of those within your household. Let's go over finally to Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 to 35. 12, 38 to 35. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. <laughs> they want to see a sign. They want to see a miracle. They want to see evidence. The fact that the, our Lord has expressed such knowledge and understanding of the things of the Lord, and now he will exercise wisdom. And what is wisdom but the exercise of the knowledge and the understanding you have received? What people would call the orthopraxy. The fruit, the fruit, for you, for, for all three are essential. All three must be put into play. If, you, if, if any one of these three is absent, it is dead. After all, what is wisdom without knowledge or understanding of the things of the Lord? It is but the excellence of the efforts of man, which will be rusted and consumed. Verses 39, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet of Jonas. Jonah. What was the sign? For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That's all we'll get. Resurrection. There's your sign. I'd say that's sufficient. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with the generation, and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. And you think, and if you recall, were those Assyrians, a bunch of backwater hicks, third world, third worlders, slum lords, low IQ, dirt poor, and swimming in the, swimming in their in their own filth? Some of them, but don't we all have those people? No, it was a grand city, metropolis, a jewel of. Quote, quote, human civilization. And they repented. Why? Because they received the knowledge of the Lord. They understood 
his holiness and their sin. And in, and what was their wisdom? They repented. And for a time walked in his ways and, were, and for a few generations spared. Verse 42, The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she sh came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The wisdom of Christ, greater than Solomon, is here. The sinless one, the propitiation for our sins. The Lamb of God, who redeems the world. For those who will accept his grace, that is. So like I said, Christ says, not my will, but yours be done. Regardless of what the outcome is, I will do the Lord's will. Even if it does not benefit me on this side of heaven. Verse 43, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation, this wicked, prosperous, well-learned, knowledgeable of the ways of the world and all our sciences and arts, understanding of all our philosophies and theologies, wise in the ways of building, a more advanced, progressive civilization, full of freedom, economic prosperity, scientific and technological revolution. And yet, what is the risk of these souls devoid of the spirit of the Lord? That unclean spirits Fallen spirits, wicked spirits, will occupy them, influence them, manipulate them, deceive them, and for a time leave them, but come back with a vengeance. Hence, what? As the times darken due to forgetting the knowledge of the Lord, you have what? A great delusion. Remember back to Job. Who are we but to seek the knowledge of the Lord? Indeed, their counsel for a men for men in high places, men of worldly men of high places, worldly ways, men esteemed in the doctrines of Antichrist. They seek counsel, consultation, they seek advice. They'll pay top dollar to get ahead in their undead life. Question is, my dear brethren, do we spend more time? Do we spend more resources? Then more of our blood, sweat, and tears to acquire that which will build an earthly kingdom or that of which will help us be transformed by the renewing of our minds, the cleansing of our souls, the purification of our hearts, and that is education, the knowledge of the Lord's ways, understanding the distinction between that of his holiness and our wickedness and choosing the path of holiness being separated unto him and thus with wisdom is what the maturing exercise of that knowledge of that understanding and then passing it on but in the meantime what modeling it demonstrating it for after all the Lord doesn't tell us what to do because he says, but because it's what he does. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer, signing out.